Blessings on 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 blessings and even more blessings on top of blessings for the 2022 year. I am thankful. I'm Pastor G. I'm excited about, again, another time of sharing through Lunchtime Uplift. This is our fourth year going in uh 2022 our fourth year we're thankful for god for the opportunity always to share uh, to you his incredible incredible people well as you can see i'm alone today uh lady t is uh with our uh, granddaughter so we are we're thankful she's doing fine everything is 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 well we are thankful uh for all the blessings of the lord that are uh shared abroad in all of our hearts and coming to a fruition in all of our life there will be manifestation this year there will be manifestation this year 2022 the year of inheritance i have a word from the lord i'm excited about sharing it if you will if you will if you will begin to share i'm going to pray that god's word would penetrate the hearts of the listener that it would sink deep thank all of you for tuning in uh father thank you so much again for this uh, uh, being alive this year, 2022, being alive, Lord, and, and God have an opportunity to, Lord, really maximize what I was created to do. And I thank you for your blessings being upon me. I thank you for your blessing being upon the people that are here today, that are hearing. Lord, I thank you for a, a, a word that will open up their minds, God, to think again some things that we've already thought, Lord, so that we can implement something that we've never implemented before, so that we can see the harvest that we've never seen. So I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for uh, your healing that is covering our land, Lord. In spite of the reports, Lord, your, 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 your spirit is the spirit of healing. Thank you for the spirit of healing that is, that is running rampant across our, our land, Lord. The spirit of healing that is running rampant across our land. Thank you so much for it being this time. I thank you for, again, the heroes on today. I'm excited, Lord. In Jesus' name, friend, I'm excited. I'm excited. I thank God for this opportunity again to, to share. Uh, to come before you again and to share a word from the Lord. Get ready, get ready, get ready. This is 22. Uh, this is not one of those uh, New Year, uh, whatever. This is the truth according to Scripture. I'm going to go to Scripture and show you this. You live to the right time. You live to the right time. You are living in the right time to actually maximize your creation. I was, I was, I was uh, arrested, if you will, last night. Uh, as I was reading and 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 and, and hearing uh, Joshua, I want I want to kick this teaching off this year, 2022. This is our first uplift, and I want to kick this off with uh, Joshua chapter 18, verse number three. Joshua 18, verse number three. Now this is the year of inheritance. We're going to walk in inheritance, but there needs to be a word heard and implemented before we can actually take possession of what we were created for joshua chapter 18 verse number three it's the question that is the question for 2022 here it is joshua 18 verse number three it says and joshua said unto the children of israel how long are ye slack to go to possess the land which the lord god of your father had given you how long how long how long how long are you slack that's the key word there slack how long are you slack how long will you be slack how long will you be slack how long will you be slowful in your possession or taking possession of the inheritance so joshua asked the question how long how long will you be slack to go possess the land which the lord god of your father hath watch this watch this hath given you hath god always speaks in the hath language this means that this is already secure in him this is not a deal he's working on this is not something he's trying to pull together for you this is something that was already completed in him your inheritance is complete in god this is not something that he working on he's working on now hear this a very valuable key when god drops something in your spirit it is not a work in progress it is a work that is done when it hits your spirit 
It is not a work in progress. It is a work that is done. So you are not waiting on God. There are there is some progress procrastination on your part that is causing you not to take possession possession of the land. Now 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 this is interesting because uh, there's a lot of stuff being said about God's desire and intent. I want I want to I want to make something very clear. And this started right up in Genesis chapter 1, 26, 27, 28, and we and we will get to this. I want to show you something that here's what Joshua said and here's what here's the intent of God concerning his people original and his people presently now we read the scripture and it talks about Israel we read the scripture and it, it, it and it talks about Israel but Galatians says God before preached the gospel to Abraham that in him all of the families of the earth of the world would be blessed in other words it started there but it did not end there you are qualified to live the blessings of the Lord you are qualified you are qualified to live the blessings you are qualified to live the blessing I want you to hear me you are qualified this 22 is the year of inheritance but it's going to take an understanding to actually take possession of now Joshua asked the question and I need you to see it because this is so crucial that we understand here's what he said he says how long are you slack to go possess the land how long are you going to be uh, uh, sitting back and saying I can't have it how long how long now now the possession here the possession is the possession that was always in God's mind contrary to popular misunderstanding or all of the other distractions presented by the enemy through very credible sources God's desire for me is to take possession of land God's desire for me is to take possession of his possession God's desire for his people, especially the ones that understand his will, is to take possession of land. This was from the beginning. It's God's original intention and it's God's final decision. I've got to take possession of territory. The earth belongs to the Lord. The enemy has convinced us as people that it belonged to him. And God placed originally Adam, hear me now, to be the dominionaire of this earth. Of the, uh, to, we are to be dominionaire. This is bubbling out of my heart because we got to get to it. Our job as uh, 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 people of God is to take possession of land. This is what Joshua said. The scripture says that the Bible is written for our example admonition so what we see in scripture is what we are to see uh, how we see the heart of God is in his word taking possession of the land the new living translation of Joshua 18 3 says then Joshua asked them how long are you going to wait before taking possession of the remaining land the Lord the God of your ancestors have given to you how long how long now at the at the juncture of this writing in in Joshua chapter 18 we are the Joshua generation we are to take possession of the land this is the year that we take possession of God's property possession of God's property possession I am here to take possession of what belonged to my father and that's to take possession of God's property I know we come we have come up with other conclusions other conclusions of of what we think God has asked us for well here's what I always say my opinion doesn't mean anything the scripture gives us clarity on what God desires God desires that we take possession of his land the enemy comes with the alternate ideas uh, it's interesting that when David says you hold your word over your name you hold your word over your name you hold your word over your name that's an interesting concept when you really understand it because we have the proclivity and and this idea that the most important thing on God's mind is that I'm calling his name I'm calling his name in other words this, a picture now I know this is gonna be very difficult to wrap your mind around but it's in the scripture you we have this idea that God has a complex and for him to know who he is we've got to declare it 
We got we we got to declare who God is for he, him to know. He says, "I hold my word over my name. I hold my word over my name. I hold my my word over my name." That's an interesting. What is he saying? He said, "I prefer that you follow the instructions of Scripture." Then you call in my name. In other words, we 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 are uh, what we call incredible worshipers, but we are not people that follow instruction. We would rather be in worship than to follow the real instruction in Scripture. I know that's difficult to grasp because you're a church baby. I I am too. I am too. But what the Lord is saying, there is something that I desire for you to do, but you have decided to go with the alternate route because it has taught you to go the alternate route. I hold my word over my name. And so here's how David said, you have exalted your word above all of your name. In other words, there is an instruction for my life. And God desires for me to go after the instruction while I'm trying to do something opposing that. And it's good stuff. And so that's how the enemy causes us to be out of alignment with God. The year 22 is the year of inheritance. We're going to have to follow an instruction. There are some shifts that are happening right now that is going to cause us to be in a very difficult place if we don't follow what is on the heart of God and what God is designing as opposed to us just having traditional settings and doing traditional things that is not reaping us what God has desired. This is the time of land possession. Joshua say, how long? Will you wait? How long will you not? How long will you sit and do other things and be slack and don't go possess the land? You were put here by God to take possession of his possession. And now is the time for you to take possession of the possession. This is the question of the day. How long will you delay walking into your inheritance? What is God's inheritance concerning me? It's the same inheritance that it was in scripture. It is the land, the land, the land, all of this. Everything God prophesied to Israel was about taking possession of a promised land, a promised land, a promised land. This is the earth. This is why we are here. This is why God created man. This is your purpose in your life. Now, I know it's difficult to wrap my mind. I want to have a good church. I'm here to suggest something, and I'm here to tell you. We are not going to have church like we have going to have church uh, 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 if we take possession. When we take possession of the land, we're going to really have and see the Spirit of God show up and say, I'm happy. When we start doing what His original intent is, not the alternate idea, not the alternate idea. Now, most of you know that I am. Uh, 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 a church baby so i love to have church but my number one priority is to live my creation is to live in what i was created for you were created by the father for a specific purpose in kingdom hear me you are created you were created by the father for a specific purpose hear me in kingdom in kingdom in kingdom there is a specific reason why you are here today. It is a specific reason in God. <clears throat> he did not just randomly say, here, I'm just going to make a, a, a person. He, he, God was intentional when he created you. Very intentional. You have a purpose in kingdom. You have a purpose in kingdom. You were created for a specific purpose. This year, you're going to find out what that purpose is. Now, there will be grace released, and the grace is already released right now. We're in it right now. We're in it right now to understand that purpose. And I did say grace because this needs to be emphasized. There is a grace released to understand God's specific purpose for creating you <coughs> in the kingdom. <coughs> there is a grace to understand that kingdom purpose. You, now hear me, you will need grace to really understand what you were created for in kingdom or the kingdom purpose for your creation. The reason I'm saying this and the reason this is important because if you don't have the grace to understand this, if you don't have the grace to go after this, you will be distracted by alternate 
ideas. You will be distracted by alternate ideas. You can't go another year. You can't go another year without understanding fully the specifics of my creation. And God did not randomly create you. He created you for a specific. Now is the time to understand that in detail so that you can walk in your inheritance. You can walk in your inheritance. Now, there is grace released to understand the purposes in which God created you for, for kingdom purposes. But you will have to go after it. You will have to go after it. Please hear me. You will have to go aggressively, aggressively. You're going to have to go aggressively after it. Now, hear me. There will be much opposition. <clears throat> there will be much opposition, excuse me. There will be much, much, much opposition. Let me explain. We're in different times right now. We have, the, I've been talking about an era shift. We are here. In 2022, we are in a different time zone. We are in, in the spirit realm. We are somewhere totally different. This is the time that you're going to lock into purpose and there's grace released now. If you will go after it, there's grace released now for you to understand that purpose. And there is grace released for you to maximize this time for those that were here and not get distracted because there will be distraction, major, 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 major distractions are coming your way, are coming after you major distractions are coming after you the enemy wants you to go with the old narrative and not walk into this new season of your life and grace is the only thing that will stop you from getting caught up and getting getting distracted in this season now the biggest of your distractions please hear me the biggest of your distractions i need to say this will become will come or is coming from your old teaching i gotta say that again it's coming from your old teaching i hope i don't offend you today i hope i don't offend you but i got to tell you what the truth is we are shifting into something you are important to that shift god wants you to know that he's he, he created you so for something more than the old narrative he's giving grace for you to understand but it will come with opposition it will come your old teaching this is why the grace is so necessary for this golden opportunity in understanding your creation. Here's why grace is necessary. Because the greatest hurdle, hear me, the greatest hurdle to overcome is being able to hear and receive when you already heard and received for years. Hear me again. The greatest hurdle that you are going to face when this kingdom opportunity comes to understand the purposes of God concerning you, the meticulous specific of your creation, is when you have already heard a certain thing for years and when God comes with grace to give you a different outlook on what he had intended for you forever, you are going to have to have grace to be un unleashed or, or, or to, 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 to be pulled away from what you thought you already knew. It's the challenge of all of us as we walk into these new opportunities that God has released right now is being able to see and to hear what God is saying now when you have heard something said for years you've been taught something for years you've lived your life according to that for years and now to hear that there is another level there's something else that i'm at the putting place after i've heard and everybody that i know is living this particular uh, mindset they are operating out of this and the lord is calling me to be something different yes you're going to be challenged your biggest hurdle your greatest opposition to walking into kingdom purpose or inheriting what God has for you in 2022 is being able to hear the specifics of what God is saying for you. There is a grace available now for you to embrace what God has for you in the now, in the now, in the now. I need to read something to you because the greatest hurdle again, the greatest hurdle is overcome 
is overcoming is being able, able to hear and receive. Now, when you have heard and received for years, I've got to be able to hear past what I've heard and lock in on what God has given me in grace now. In grace now. Now, Matthew, this is nothing new, nothing new. Matthew chapter 11, verse number 12. As God is transitioning us into this new opportunity in a new season, he's going to make his word very clear to us. Our issues have been that the word has not been clear to us. we got to hear again what we thought we already heard. And God is releasing the grace for revelation to, to, to come. Now, in Matthew chapter 11, verse number 12, Matthew 11, verse number 12. Now, listen to this language of scripture. It says, it says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent and the violent take it, take it by force. Now, 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 now let's look at that again. Cause I need to unpack this. Now it says, and from the day, days of John the Baptist, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Now, I've heard that passage of scripture my entire life. Not until now, recently, grace came to understand. This is Jesus talking. This is Jesus talking. From the day John the Baptist was the forerunner or the introduction to Jesus, the Christ, the, the, the bearer of the good news, the gospel of the kingdom. Now, Jesus says from the days of John the Baptist, from from the from the day that the forerunner came until me, the the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Let's read that in the amplified version to make this clearer, <coughs> because what Jesus is actually saying, and he's saying it now. Here's what he here's what is important to understand about this. Jesus landed in a mindset. Jesus came preaching and John came preaching. They were the last two uh, 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 to be born under the law. Jesus and John, both of those uh, prophets under the law. Jesus is preaching a gospel, a good news of the kingdom of God coming that is not familiar to the religious people of his time. He's preaching their, the gospel of the kingdom. That's what the scripture said. Now, this is so important that we understand. He's preaching the gospel to a set of people, Pharisees, Sadducees. These were religious people. These were people that sat on the Sanhedrin court. These were 70, uh, 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 the Sanhedrin is seven rabbis that set on it. They were the governing force of the time. It's like the board of bishops, if you will. I need you to understand this. That's why I'm explaining this. Because here's Jesus, the preacher of a new seeming doctrine to a mindset of people that at, at the in their time, in their time was the direct set up order of God for their time. Now, 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 Jesus said the law and the prophets were until John. Now that's just that's the law and the prophets were until John. The law Luke 16, 16 the law and the prophets were until John. Now Matthew 11 says and from the days of John the Baptist from the days of John the Baptist uh, from the, until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violent and the violent must take it by force. Now I keep reiterating this because this is the the the, the segue from something old into something new, and it's difficult to grasp it if you have lived as the people of Jesus. They lived, they lived under the law, which was God's 
uh, uh, came from the Lord, came from God himself. He says, here, here's the covenant. Here's the covenant that you are going to live by. That is the truth. Here's the covenant that you will live by. Here's the covenant that you will live by. Here's the covenant that you will live by. Now, 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 here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. John, John, the, the, the scripture says, John the Baptist, John the Baptist, he says, the kingdom suffered until, from John until now. The kingdom suffered violence. Now, Jesus is preaching the kingdom of God to a people that don't understand, never heard this before, in other words. What are you talking about? And there are people that are standing in the midst. Now, there was great resistance from the leadership. Of course, of course, the leadership is saying that, hey, look, we know what the Lord has given us in the law. Every time they encountered him, they would say, here's what Moses said. Now, mind you, because this is very important to understand, Moses was. Moses was. The law was. The law was. That, that understanding was. No doubt about it. It was. But until John... The Baptist, the law and the prophets were unto John. Now, here it is, Jesus coming out of nowhere seemingly and dropping something on them that they're never, they've never heard before. Now, can you uh, 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 imagine what they were thinking? Who is this guy? Is he a heretic? He's, he's lost his mind. Don't he know? Don't he know that this is what God has given to his people? Now, I'm making this uh, 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 emphasis very strong because here's where we are right now. We're sitting there. There is a, 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 a an error shift, an understanding shift. That's why I say it's going to take grace for, for, for you to even grasp this, for you to even wrap your mind, for you to even get this. It's going to take grace for it to happen because this is not just, this won't mix with your old. You're not going to come up with a, a positive outcome if you try to mix this with your old understanding. It won't work. Your old understanding will always, because it's more, the language is more familiar to you. It's not going to work for you. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not. They won't abide together. They won't. They won't. Now, now please hear me. So, so Jesus is preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Uh, this, this, this gospel was so heavy. And so different that even John said, man, what is going on with him? Is he the one or should I look for another? The language of his, his, his gospel is not the language that we are accustomed to. John, the forerunner, even said that this is not, this is not language that we are familiar with. So should, should, should I embrace this or should I say, wait, 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 let me find out. Let me look for, because this is not for me. That's the place. That's why I want to emphasize how difficult and how much grace we need for this to even, even be able to enter in our heart. Jesus is preaching. Now, hear me. And there are people there that are hearing the gospel. Their hearts are tingling. Their hearts are being moved by the message of the kingdom. But he knows that, that there's going to be opposition for those that embrace this word. So he says, the kingdom suffereth violence. And the violent, in other words, in other words, for, for, for you, he's telling you, it's going to be difficult to embrace this. For you to embrace this, you're going to have to violently get past. Now, 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 this is not physical violence. This is not you fighting anybody. This is you being able to to hear again after you've already heard for years. This is you being able to hear something brand new when you have already heard what you think was. This is the this is what the challenge. This is the challenge Jesus is telling. He says, "Your problem is for you to embrace this. You're going to have because you won't hear, you won't hear. He's telling you, you won't hear this talk everywhere." You won't hear this talk everywhere. You won't hear this. You, you're going to hear old narratives talk. You're gonna, he's warning. The kingdom, though, the message of the kingdom, suffered violence. And you got to take this thing by force. You got to be able to transcend everything that you're... Let me read this out of the, uh, the uh, uh, Amplified Version. Look at it in the Amplified Version. And from the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven endured... Violent assault. <coughs> now look at that. Violent assaults. And violent men. 
and violent men and violent men and violent men and violent men seize it by force as a pre look at that as a precious prize as a precious prize a share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with most ardent zeal and intense exertion now look at that look at that here's what jesus said see what he says here's what he's saying this is a prized possession that you're going to have to go after and you're going to have to be able to transcend the resistance of your own understanding against it it's so brand new it's something so new to your hearing it's something so different from what you heard you 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 gotta have to tell you you're gonna have to understand that this is a god decision even though he lived in this space forever in your mind now he's saying i made a decision just as he did in that day the the people that jesus preached to were old covenant people and here's Jesus preaching to them that you are about to be and experience a new covenant. How can they embrace that after years, after centuries of living one mindset? That's the challenge that we are faced with right now. How do we embrace this thing that the Lord has given us opportunity to embrace? After we've lived years on years after year after year after year of hearing one thing and now the Lord is saying something. I know this is an incredible thing right now, but you got to embrace and you got to understand that this is such an incredible moment in kingdom that has afforded all of us. Let's read that again. Let's read that again. It says, I'm going to go to the Amplified Version. It says, and from the days of John the Baptist until this present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assaults. And violent men <coughs> seize it by force as a precious prize. As a precious prize. We got to see this kingdom moment as a precious prize. A precious prize. A share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with most ardent zeal and intense exertion. We got to go after this thing. It's it's going to be difficult because I've got to hear past what I heard. I got to hear past what I heard. I got to hear past what I heard. Now, Jesus came preaching the gospel, the UN Gileon of the kingdom. Now that was interesting within itself. This is where John was confused. John preached on how the fan was in his hand. He's about the axis at the root of the tree. You know, all of the old paradigm uh, uh, mindset, all of the things that the old uh, uh, mindset would say, all of the all of the things that the old covenant presented. That's what John was presenting. Jesus came on the scene preaching the gospel of the kingdom. This switched up things because now Jesus is letting people go when the axe should have been at the root of the tree. Jesus is now actually forgiving people that are caught in the very act of it. And when that hits the ears of an old believer, it's difficult for them to understand that, whoa, what's going on? This is not what we do. That's why it's so significant that we hear again, because to inherit what God is trying to give, you're going to have to understand the grace of God. You're going to have to understand the grace of God. So now the kingdom suffer in violence. This is a year of inheritance. The kingdom, this kingdom life that you are living will suffer violence. What does that mean? That you are going to be challenged to hear outside of what you've already heard. Remember, Jesus is preaching to an old covenant crowd, a new covenant concept. And he's telling the people, for you to actually get into this message or walk in this message, you are going to have to uh, be violent about it. In other words, not physically, but being able to jump past or go past what you've already been taught your whole life. And you're going to have other people that ridicule you because you are hearing something that they are not hearing. Or the grace of God has come for you to embrace something different than what you have lived in your entire life. Now, the gospel of the kingdom 
please hear this is good news is a good news message now hear me is the good news message of now now please hear this i need to unpack this repentance number one redemption number two and restorations now the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom is good news about repentance redemption and restoration now this is so interesting this is so interesting that we understand because this word repentance throw us way into left field repentance is a greek word metanoe go please study that go please study that now 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 Here's what I got to understand. Metanoe is exactly what I just uh, explained to you when Jesus is preaching a kingdom, a new message to a people that have lived an old covenant, a new gospel, a new covenant message to ears that have only been familiar with old, co old covenant. Now, what he's saying to them, you're going to have to repent or think again, metanoe, to rethink what you've already thought. Rethink what you've already thought. If you don't, you will never be able to enter into this kingdom uh, a movement of God. I'm going to say it again because this is important. Metanoe is a Greek word. It is a Greek word. Metanoe, the Greek word for repentance. I know we church babies, the only thing we ever heard about repentance was at the altar. Now, please hear me. You can go to the altar and cry and sob and never repent. Repenting is changing your mind to think again what you've already thought. So when John says, uh, uh, Matthew 3, one, uh, verses 1 and 2, it says, in, the, in, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent, here it is, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, now please hear this because this is going to be very crucial. If not, you're going to keep recycling old narratives and what's happening. We're going to end up in the same places that we keep ending up in. In a time of grace where God is opening up the door for us to hear again. The greatest challenge of our life now is being able to hear past what we've already heard. The easiest thing to do is recycle old narratives. <coughs> That does not bring us into the place of wholeness in God. I need you to hear me once again. So the gospel of the kingdom is the good news message of repentance. Again, metanoia. In other words, I got to rethink what I think I've already thought. This is the same challenge of Jesus when he enters in or he comes preaching the gospel, the good news of a new covenant to an old covenant mindset. mindset. And so he says, repent to the old covenant mindset. You're going to have to think again what you already thought. This confused John, so he says, I know you're going to be confused. John is the forerunner for Jesus. And when he hears of the, 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 the acts of Christ, in, 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 in this this grace act of you see a woman caught got caught in the act of adultery and you let her go now when the pharisees came to jesus at at, at when this act happened they said moses said but what said you so john and jesus were the last prophets under the law and the law and the prophets were unto john luke 16. Now, this is crucial that I get this, or I'm going to repeat in this very crucial time, a transition of the body of Christ. I'm going to repeat narratives. I'm going to repeat what has been taught, and the enemy will consistently take advantage of God's church. And so he says, now is the time that my people hear again. This is the year of inheritance, but there are some things, some narratives, some repenting that has to happen. Now, the church, us coming to church and repent, yes, but there is a greater level of repentance that must happen. We got to think again. We got to hear again what we think we heard. We got to approach this again. Are we going to have good church, but victory won't come to the people of God? The inheritance to the people of God won't come because this will only happen when your word level matches what God has issued. Your word level have to have to match what God has issued. So Jesus is preaching this gospel and he's preaching to an old covenant mindset and it's difficult for them to grasp. Difficult for them to grasp. So he says the kingdom suffered violence and the violent was taken by force. That's not a physical violence. That means that you're going to have to aggressive go after in spite of all of the resistance that come 
uh, most of it inside you from what you already been taught. When God comes to you with another opportunity to proceed further, you're going to have to fight against what you already been taught. That's the greatest battle that we are facing right now as a believer and as a church is being able to transcend what we've already heard for years, for years, for years, for years. Now, the year of inheritance, let me get back to that. <clears throat> this year of inheritance, hear me, hear me. Our base text was Joshua 18, verse number three. Here's what Joshua says. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, how long are ye slack to go and possess the land which the Lord your God, the God of your fathers, uh, uh, hath, hath given you? Now, hath is uh, past tense. God always speaks in the hat language. God is not trying to figure out what he's trying to do with you. God is already. Now it's time for you to hear so that you can go after what God has already issued. But you got to have the proper principles in place to get it. So this is the year of inheritance. This year is not just about, not just about your needs being met. This year is about abundant supply. I'm going to say it again. This year, if you are just trying to get needs met, you are totally out of alignment with the kingdom assignment. Now, when Joshua declares to the children of Israel, remember that's God's original intent, but we know that the scripture said God before preached the gospel to Abraham. That's why we declare we live the blessings of Abraham. Before preached the gospel to Abraham that indeed all of the nations of the earth will be blessed. Everybody, not just one nation, but all of the nations. So this year is the year of inheritance. This is not just getting your needs met, but this is about abundant supply. Now your gospel, what you are hearing, has got to qualify you for that. You cannot, you won't go into a, the year of abundant supply, uh, 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 expecting abundant supply if you're living under what you've already heard. Because most don't even believe that that's what God's intent. Now, Joshua said the land was the inheritance. The land was the inheritance. Most of our gospel tell us being more spiritual is the inheritance. Being more spiritual is the inheritance. Being more spiritual is the inheritance. I'll say it again. Being more spiritual. Now, I, I, I don't mean to offend. I don't mean, but we got to stick with what the scripture says. The scripture gives us God's heart concerning what he wants. It's the land. From right, right up from the beginning, the, the reason why God created man is very plain in scripture. This is not the year of just needs being supplied. It's about an abundant supply. It's a, now, the reason why I'm saying this is because babies get their needs supplied. Babies get their needs supplied, but mature sons speak the authority of the father. Mature sons speak with the authority of the father. Now, we are not just talking about getting needs supplied. No. No. And, and a true sign of maturity is me following the specifics of God's instruction concerning me. That's how I get abundant supply. Again, babies get their needs supplied. But, but it's a mature son who follow the instructions of the Lord and meticulously implement what he desires over all other distractions are the ones that walk in authority and see the abundant. Abundant supply will come to those that understand the kingdom assignment. There's a kingdom assignment. There's a kingdom assignment that is from the Lord. That's what I got to understand. Now, I got to understand what God wants over what I've been taught. I got I to gotta find out what God wants so I can walk in abundant supply and take possession of the inheritance. This comes, I'm, I'm gonna read this again. I read this and this has been a base text that we've been reading and reading and reading. I'm gonna read it again. This is Genesis 1, 26. This is the assignment of God, original, and it is assignment of God, a final. He's not changed what he desires and what he wants. Here it is. Here it is. Then God said, let us make man in our image. This is God's uh, intent for man. It is still his intent according to our likeness. Let them have dominion 
over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. The 27th verse says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. The 28th verse is the reason why I am here. Then God blessed them. I am blessed of the Lord. 2022 is the year of here. I am blessed of the Lord. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Be fruitful and multiply. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and fire of the air. Uh, 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 oh, and, and every creeping thing. And every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, this is so important. That we understand this word from the Lord. This is so important. Now, the the reason for my being here is to be fruitful, to multiply, and to replenish. That's why God is abundantly supplying me. That's why he's abundant. There's a reason for my being here. The alternate alternative is to go to church. Now, you know I love church, but the church should be the institution by which the kingdom curriculum is preached and taught. Listen to me. The reason for church is that we teach the kingdom curriculum, the heart of God concerning his creation. Every other thing is just a good alternative that does not bring into the life of God's people purpose. And allow them to live in the true purposes of God. Hear me, I'm, I'm going to say it again. The church is the institution or the college or, or the university in which the kingdom curriculum should be preached. What is really on God's heart should be taught at church. It's the sanctioned place that God has designed for his kingdom to be taught and to be preached. To bring people into victory of where God is now and his final, his, his original intention is his final decision. He has not changed. Now, let me, let me end. I'm, I got to end this. I got to end this. This is too important. This is too important. This year won't be a year. Hear me. I'm, I'm almost done. This year won't be the year that we are vague in our relationships with the Father. This won't be the year that I'm allowed to be vague. Right now, we are so, the representation of God, it's, it, we are so vague in, 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 in our relationship. It, it's not very clear on, on who we are connected to, what the purpose of the connection, and 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 if it's real, the if if who we connected to is real, we we have left it so open. And one of the reasons I believe is that uh, uh, we go after other gods. We use, uh, in other words, we use other methods uh, as opposed to going to God for uh, uh, the things that He want us to come to Him to supply. We got we got so many other things. And our relationship is so vague. We pay more attention to other things than we do to our God. We we as we we are we we rather watch a series on TV and and, and and brag about it on social media social media than to talk about our relationship with God. Now I know it's a personal relationship, but 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 actually actually your relationship should be a testimony of what it's like to be connected to unlimited resource. Uh, but 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 this year, 2022, now, listen to me. I, I do have a disclaimer. This won't be for everybody. I know I know this is not for everybody. I'm preaching to those, as Jesus preached to us, saying the kingdom suffering violence. In other words, there's a lot of you out here that hear this, but there's only a few that's going to break through and grab it. I get that. I'm not. I'm not arguing with that. The choice is yours. That's not mine to even grapple with. But this year won't be a year of vagueness in your relationship with God. For me to understand, because what God is releasing in inheritance will only come to the mature, and is coming through a download in the spirit. 
you, you're going to have to have a definite connection to God. Now, now this is different than what we have heard. I'm spiritual. What does that mean? I'm spiritual. That's why the scripture said, Beloved, believe not every spirit. The believe not. This is going to come out of the word of the Lord. Because you can't be spiritual and, 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 and not be in God's word. There's a lot of people that are claiming spiritual, but they know nothing about God's word. Now, there is a, present, a presentation of spiritual that's got a whole nother word system. I get that. 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 But what I'm saying to you, for you to understand what the Lord is issuing in 21, you have to be in his word. You have to be in the scripture. The scripture. It is the script that you have to get into the scripture. It is the script that paints the picture if you really want to know what is on the heart of God. This year for some that will uh, uh, go after this kingdom message and, and, and be able to transcend past all that has attacked your mind, all of the distractions, all of the things that, that has been buying for your attention and you can get focused Man, this is the year of abundant supply. This will be the year God is going to make you a billboard. I believe that this is the year that God makes the distinctions. God makes the distinctions. There's going to be distinctions made in your life because of your kingdom understanding and the word that you've gone after and your discipline. I believe that this is the distinctive year of distinctions. This is a year of distinction. It seems as if you had lost prior to now, but this year is going to be the year of distinction for those that can follow this word. You, you are, you, it's going to be difficult for you to live kingdom and you don't live in the word. It's just not going to happen. You're going to have to be in the word of the Lord because this is a spiritual. Now, I again, I hear a lot of stuff talk about spirituality, but most of it don't even talk about the word of the Lord. So be very careful that you don't get caught up into that. Be very careful that you don't get caught up into that. First Corinthians uh, nine. First Corinthians uh, chapter nine. First Corinthians nine, uh, two. First Corinthians two, verse number nine through twelve, and then we're out of here. Look at what it says here. But as it is written, this is the year twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two, as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. This is 2022 language. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so now, even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. That we might know the things that have been freely given us by God freely given us by God now this is what uh, 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 we must realize this is the year that we won't be vague in our relationship we will get into the word because this is the year that the the exponential increase the the inheritance the 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 direction to this the kingdom life that I wanted to live is in God and so the eye haven't seen, neither ear have heard will only happen to those that are seeing in the spirit because the spirit is what's going to reveal to us as the scripture has said. This is the time that our closeness and our relationship with God will be fortified again. Fortified. Now, again, I know there's a lot that won't hear this and they'll say, well, no, I'm good like I am. That's if you're good like you always get a disclaimer, if you're good like you are, then continue to do. This is for those that are ready for something new. 
This is for those that are, are ready for the thing that has eluded you for years. Now I'm ready to walk into my inheritance. My life, for those that are saying my life is bigger than what my life has been. Now God is opening up and giving the grace for us to walk in this thing. But it's going to take it's going to take some discipline on your part, some sacrifice on your part to get it, to get it, to go after the kingdom suffering violence. And the violent must take it by force. This is 2022. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. This is the grace being released for your life to be lived as God has created you. The specifics of life now is going to be available for those of us that are go after. And I'm excited about your future. I'm excited about you going after everything God has said. This won't be a vague year. This won't be a vague year. This won't be a year that you replace God with other methods. This 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 is not that year. This is not the year you're going to get by with that. That that grace is over. That time is over. You're going to have to know specifically what he wants. You're going to have to know specifically what he wants. Now, think about the enemy knows when grace has been released to, to step into new levels. And he also knows when the grace has been released and you don't step into it, you don't, you're not interested in it. So now what we do, we leave doors open, cracks open for him to reap havoc in our life. This is the year of grace. This is your grace. This is the year of inheritance. But there are specifics about it that we've got to go after. God is ready to release it to you. It's it's now. How long? How long? How long? How long? How long are you slack to go possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers have given you? Now is the time. Now, how long? What causes us not to? This is the picture of us being the slackness here is how long will you not put the necessary things in place so that you can inherit how long will you not do what you know to be done to get what god has already said you can have that's what it is saying that's what it's saying it's saying it's been there the whole time but you have not did in your necessary work to make sure you inherit what's already been there and this year is the year that we do our relationships with with the father will not be vague relationships we will not be vague no one will question if i am connected no one will question if if god is my god this won't be that year this won't be that year this is the year of inheritance this won't be the time that we will be vague about it and this is the time that uh, uh, First Corinthians two nine says again that I haven't seen neither ear, but this is only revealed through the Spirit of God. This is only now you are not going to know the heart of God if you refuse to get into the Word of God. I know there's been uh, these alternatives. I know you're spiritual and all of that, but beloved, believe not every spirit. <laughs> If if, if 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 the spirit don't suggest you going to the word, then uh, scrutinize, scrutinize, please scrutinize, because God's heart is in His word, and I got to be in His word to for His heart to be revealed. But this is the year of an opportunity of grace release for the inheritance. This is not just the year your needs going to be made met. Babies get their needs met. This is not the year. This is the year of abundant supply. And it only coming to mature sons. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to hear again. God, to implement what you said. And so that we can live what you have promised us that we could have. I thank you so much for this word penetrating deep into the hearts of your people. This 2022 year of inheritance will be exactly that, Lord. We will get what you have released unto us because of our understanding through your word of your heart's desire. And Lord, I thank you for the discipline to walk it out. The discipline to walk it out. The discipline to walk it out. I pray for those that are sick on today, Lord, you send your spirit of healing right now in the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. I thank God uh, for, again, the first uh, uplift of 2022. We are very excited about this year and what God is doing. So stay tuned, stay tuned, if you will. Stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. Stay tuned. This is a great time to be alive of all the times to be alive you are in the greatest time 
uh, 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 being alive to be alive. Thank you so much again. For those of you that want to share, here you go. Now, now, why do you share? Why do you share money? It's because it's a principle. It's a principle. It's a principle in scripture. I don't have time to teach it all, but you know, you know, you know the principle of, of, of sowing and reaping. Uh, if you don't know, you should. So here, here's an opportunity to sow right here. You see my website as well. You go to the web page and check us out and find out what we're doing. We are very excited about all the things that God has promised for this year. And I hope you are too. Amen, amen, and amen. Thankful, thankful, thankful. Uh, thank for all of you that are, are tuned in uh, today. Let me see who who's here today. Amen. Uh, uh, all right, all right. Uh, Apostle Victor Wynn, blessings and a happy new year to you. Uh, Bree. Uh, Gilmore, blessings to you, blessings to you. Ble Valerie Shackelford, blessings. C. Nichols, Stanton, blessings. Uh, Pastor Nicholas Kendrick, blessings to you. Apostle Deb Stockton, blessings to you. Apostle Dennis Cook, blessings to you. Uh, uh, Finn Jackson, blessings, Finn. Uh, Jackie Dyer, blessings to you. Connie Farrell, blessings to you. Uh, Mom, blessings, Mom, blessings. Donna Randall, blessings, blessings, blessings. Apostle Philip Gordon, blessings, man. Uh, Deborah Shade, blessings, blessings. Uh, 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 Pastor Darnisha Earhart, blessings. Uh, Jessica J. Green, blessings, blessings. Uh, Mama Lois Andrews, blessings, blessings. Regina Strength of God, great, blessings, blessings. Vincent Thompson, blessings, blessings. Renee Danford, blessings. Rhonda Royal, blessings. Jasmine Lee Sanders, blessings. Dovey Barrow. Dummy Danny, blessings to y'all, you guys. Uh, Tanya, Pastor Tanya, Pastor David, blessing Bowen, blessings. Uh, my 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 great friend, uh, Doctor Otis Richmond, blessings, man. Pastor Nolan and Marissa, blessings, 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 blessings. Thank all you guys for tuning in. Uh, Rosetta, blessings, blessings. Thank all you guys for tuning in. Uh, today we are excited we're excited uh tune in tomorrow morning 6 a.m to lady t uh we'll be right back here wednesday thanking god for every day of our life thank you so much for tuning in again have a great 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 monday monday thank you guys so much i start with a prophetic word i end with a prophetic word Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings.